Does perfect love cast out fear? Yes, it does. After we are like him in this world, after we are perfected, he who fears has not been perfected in love. Imagine that. Read verse 17 with verse 18. Okay, The love of God is only perfected in those who keep his word. Okay, 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 5. Okay, and if we abide in him, then we're going to walk as he walked. Okay, and then once we walk as he walked in this world and love is perfected in us, then perfect love will cast out fear. But we're going to have to walk as he walked. The fear of God or the fear of the Lord is not something that uh, we have and then, and then it's like, oh my goodness, I, I fear God or I fear the Lord, so I need to cast that out. No, the, the fear of God is like a healthy thing. It's something that we need. The fear of the Lord and the fear of God is something that we need. I'm going to show that to you according to the scriptures. So, you know, if, if we fear God, if love is perfected in us, then that's going to cast out fear. I'm not talking about the devil here. I'm not talking about fearing the devil. Okay, that's not what this video is about. Okay, the Lord has no problem whatsoever protecting us from the devil. None. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. It is our sins that give us over. Okay, 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. Check that verse out. Stop this, pause this, read that verse for yourself. Okay, if we would die to sins, live for righteousness, by his stripes we are healed. If we would die to sins and live for righteousness, we wouldn't have a problem with the devil whatsoever. The Lord is able to protect us from the devil. He has to seek someone to devour. Okay, so this is not about that. Okay, this is about the fear of God or the fear of the Lord. That's a healthy thing. Okay, the Lord's mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. And if you read this Psalm 103 version of that, it's from everlasting to everlasting. Okay, so this is a, this is a healthy thing that we're talking about here. Okay, and I'm going to show you that according to the scriptures. So, does perfect love cast out fear? Yes, it does. Okay, eventually, eventually we will serve him without fear. Okay, once, once love is perfected in us, okay, once we are like him in this world, then perfect love will cast out fear. Okay, but he who fears has not been perfected in love. Understand that. Okay, it's a part of our instructions. Imagine that. It's a part of our instructions. Okay, we're instructed to fear, to live our lives here in fear because we have been redeemed. Not only did the blood of Jesus Christ provide uh, redemption, the forgiveness of sins, but we have been redeemed from our former conduct or from our aimless conduct by the blood of Jesus. Imagine that, 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through verse 19. Okay, We've been redeemed from our aimless conduct, from our former conduct. We have to put that off. It's a part of coming to know Christ. Okay, It's a part of coming to know Christ. Many, many people are going to hear, away from me, I never knew you Okay, on the last day, and they're going to be totally shocked. Okay, Check this out, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 20 through 24. It's how we learn Christ. It's how we come to know Him. Okay, we put off the old man with our former conduct, along with our former conduct, be renewed in the spirit of our minds, and put on the new man created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, that's a part of our responsibilities. It's a part of our instructions. Imagine that. We can't just ignore our instructions. Okay, we can't just pick and choose which parts of the Word of God that, that we're going to listen to. If we do, we harden our hearts. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Okay, we can't just do that. Okay, the, if, the, if the natural branches, the natural branches were broken off for unbelief, where do you think we stand if we don't believe? We have to hear these verses and we have to believe these verses. We have to consider the goodness and the sternness of God. Sternness to those who fail, but but goodness toward us, provided we continue in His goodness. Otherwise, we too will be cut off. So, you know, we're going to have to hear our instructions, just like Noah received his instructions on how to build the ark, just like Abraham received his instructions on taking Isaac to the mountain, just like Joshua received his instructions on exactly what to do when marching around Jer Jericho for seven days, okay? We have instructions, and we can't ignore those instructions. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge, okay? It prolongs our days. Imagine that. It prolongs our days. It's life. It's protection. By the fear of the Lord, we depart from evil. Imagine that. Check that verse out. By the fear of the Lord, we depart from evil. Okay? It saves us or it delivers us from the snares of death. Imagine that. And we should choose the fear of the Lord. Okay? Check this out. Check this out right here. 
He wants us to choose the fear of the Lord. Part of the reason why the Lord doesn't answer us when we call is because we're not answering His call. Check it out. Proverbs chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 29. Read from like verse 22 all the way down to the end of that chapter. Okay, our calling includes many things. Now, we're, we're called to be holy, called to be sanctified. Uh, and I, I need to do a separate video on that. But part of this calling, check it out, is because we did not choose the fear of the Lord. Okay, He's not answering our call. Imagine that. I mean, this would seriously improve your prayer life. Okay, it's a part of the Christian process. Eventually, we're going to serve Him without fear after love is perfected in us. Okay, but for now, we should choose the fear of the Lord. We should be zealous on fire for the fear of the Lord. Okay, and I know, I mean, I've, I've heard people, we don't want to serve Him in fear. We don't want to serve the Lord in fear. We just want to serve Him in, out of love. You know, uh, he, we love because He first loved us. And you hear all these other things quoted in there with that. But now, but now check this out. Love for Jesus is to obey His Word, is to keep His Word. Love for Jesus is to keep His Word, okay? We try and mix in the way we think as humans, mix that in with Scripture, and, and it's just not working. Love for Jesus is to keep His Word, and those who keep His Word will never see death, okay? Those who don't love Jesus do not keep His Word. Okay, we can come up with excuse after excuse after excuse why we don't want to serve Him in fear. Okay, but the bottom line is, it's a part of this Christian process. It's a part of our instructions. Okay, and so, and we, He expects us to choose the fear. Let's check this out. Even if we believe Jesus, let's just say we believe Jesus. Look at uh, uh, Luke 19, 27. If we believe Jesus, according to what He said in that verse right there, will we have a problem with Him reigning over us? Okay, what we have a problem choosing the fear of the Lord, and you see, the, the word of the Lord endures forever, okay? Heaven and earth will pass away, but he says, my words will by no means pass away. This is going to happen. It's going to happen, okay? What we have a problem with it, okay? He expects us to obey Him. He expects us to obey Him. Luke uh, chapter 6, verse 46, okay? Let that sink in for a second. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. The person who says, I know Him, and doesn't, doesn't keep His commands is a liar, okay? And the truth is not in Him, okay? Like I said, many people are going to hear away from me, I never knew you on the last day. We're doing a lot of spiritual things in the name of Jesus, you know, but are we coming to know Jesus? Are we obeying Jesus? Are we giving Him uh, what He wants according to the instructions that He's given us? You see what I'm saying? It'd be like Noah building a pontoon boat rather than building what his instructions required him to build. You know, think about that for a minute. Let me give you an example of the fear of the Lord, okay? Let me just give you an example. Look at uh, Revelation chapter, look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 down through verse 23. Okay, pause this and read that for yourself. Okay, think about that for a second. And now, just imagine that this woman, who uh, a prophetess, imagine that she came to you with her children. She came to your meeting uh, seeking prayer, prayer for healing. Okay, how many people would ask her about the sins that she's caught up in? Imagine that. And that's number one. Number two, and, and especially, you know, I'm, most, I'm mainly Pentecostal. You know, and I, I can tell you what we're going to do. We're going to try and cast the devil out. Okay, but it ain't the devil. Okay, look at that passage of Scripture. Learn that for yourself. It ain't the devil here. Okay, like I said, the fear of the Lord turns us from evil. Okay, it's a healthy thing. The Lord judges His people. If we would judge ourselves, we will not come under judgment. We judge ourselves using the Word of God as the ruler. In other words, uh, we allow the Word of God to judge the thoughts and intents of our heart. Okay, but when we're being judged by the Lord, we're being disciplined. Is that what it says? Check the verse. Okay, we have to believe this word. Okay, know these scriptures for yourself. The only way to have confidence on the day of judgment is to be like him in this world. That's the only way to have confidence on the day of judgment. So we need to go on to perfection. We need to leave the elementary things and go on to perfection. Okay, we need to fear until we enter his rest. Okay, we need to fear until the love of God has been perfected on the inside of us. He who fears has not been perfected in love. So fear is a healthy thing. 
Okay, it's a healthy thing because the opposite side of that is the wrath of God comes on the sons of disobedience. Now, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but it's against what's controlling a person. There's a spirit that makes us disobey. And if we sow to please our flesh, then of the flesh we will reap corruption. Okay, we have to sow to please the spirit in order to reap everlasting life. Check the verse. Okay, we have a choice. Once we have been set free from being a slave to sin, through uh, knowing the Word of God, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, make you free from being a slave to sin. Once we're set free from being a slave to sin, then we have the freedom to choose who we will obey, whether sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness. Sin leads to death, okay? Once sin is fully grown, it will put us to death. It's our responsibility to put to death the deeds of the body by the Spirit, okay? The righteous requirements of the law will only be met in the person who walks according to the Spirit. Okay, and uh, Lord willing, I'm going to explain all those things in, in maybe in the next video, Lord willing. We need to repent and return to the Lord our God in keeping with His ways found in His words.